Tell us any of your memories. Any she had staff, which nobody else that I'd met from the Australian community had. The big salad bowls with the lovely mixture of salads and tomatoes cut up and ham and cold cuts that she had, you know, cheeses and and um, and he of course was a lovely aloof kind of host. It was mainly beer we drank, I think. I don't know, we we've maybe been drinking wine that I can't remember. Remember the cocktails? She cocktails. Used to she made cocktails, yes, yes. And then I was out there too when she was building the house for her her mother. And so we saw a few of the plans. Did your mother ever, did grandmother ever live there? No, she, yeah, no. she actually um, died, died just, just before it was finished. Yeah. And was Elwyn interested, or either you particularly interested in architecture? Is that why you would have been looking at the plans? No, no, no. I would, we were interested in the house. At one stage we were going to build ourselves, but we never got around to it. But we were interested in because it was an unusual building. And, you know, and she, she was good in taking it around. And there were a lot of artists that went out there too, and we were there. The Any Cassett, names? Judy Cassap, yeah. They drove mainly, that's how we got there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I met other Sokowskas, Henry and Eva, Kubos. And I think we met um, maybe Roy Fluke, Nancy would have been there. And uh, yeah, three or four times. I think it was always Christmas parties we used to have. Why? Did people make the effort? How was she able to command people's presence such a long way out of town? Well, because she was that kind of person. I mean, you couldn't say no. You know, she was on the phone. <laughs> she was very forceful and, um, and charming, of course. And it was an adventure. It was usually a Sunday or Saturday night we used to go out there. So we were happy to do something a bit different. We were Sydney scene. Most of us lived in flats in those days. So it was good to go. And the can, studio. And can you remember that there were interesting conversations? Why were the parties interesting or exciting? Because they were knowledgeable of art too, and then you have abstract painting, and they had books and they had magazines. And um, they, I'm not sure if they, I can't recall them ever travelling, to tell you the truth. But they had a great deal of knowledge of painting happening overseas. And her paintings were, of course, very avant garde, weren't they? For Australia. And um, for a woman, do you think? Do you well, remember it was that for a woman. Unusual? There weren't many women painting abstract paintings. I mean, she was the only one, really, because the others were still sort of more traditional landscape faces, portrait paintings, still life, of course, and the charm school was full on. A phrase that Jack coined because it was about charm. It wasn't like Robert Hughes and some of these people tweeting it as it was a curse word. It wasn't. It was a summing up of a style of painting that was comfortable. And Australians left stage still were very English, as you know. They like they like the cornflowers to go with their couches and their maybe Chinese carpets. I'm not sure. And um, they like that kind of feeling about it. But um, abstract art was really definitely avant-garde. I mean, she was one of the first abstract painters, I think. Wasn't and she? Yes, yeah. she was. Certainly women. Yeah. And do you think the party served a sort of... Um, did they have a function in consolidating that group it of It was a discussion. It was a free discussion. Who had seen what or read what. And and, uh, and actually it was also with drinking and food, good food and jokes. And I don't think anybody played the piano or sang. But the talk was always very good. Love talk. And how did that relate to the activities of the Contemporary Art Society? Well, it did, because they're nearly all committee members, and they had to think of new shows, and the art was growing in the city, and how to cope with it. And there were changes. They first had two shows a year. There was a, two, the spring and, a, and the autumn show, and then they started the young contemporaries. As a matter of fact, I thought artists, young artists, saw all this, had more chances to show than they have today. Mm. And... Um, because they took anyone, to begin with, they sort of took almost anyone yes, who was interested, didn't yes. they? Yes, and they usually were able to hang most things, mm. though it was, you know, it looked very much like a country fair, it was pretty close, but still, yeah. as it was information, get together, a celebration of art, and it wasn't about um, who had the best display, you know, it wasn't about that. Uh, Margot had her little studio in the old house and painted with artificial light 
she'd have the blinds pulled down, mm -hmm. even in daytime, you see, mm -hmm. and paint with, under electric light. That's a bit odd. We thought it was a bit odd, but anyway, that's what she preferred. However, Margot was a vibrant person and she um, was one of the pioneers of abstract art um, in Sydney and there were a number of women who were pioneers. I've got to think of Margaret Preston and Grace Cossington Smith and Margot was amongst them. Yes, well, um, you see, at that time in Sydney, the the prevailing fashion was abstract expressionism, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, now, M Margot's work did include some of that, didn't it? But it was more s structured from my understanding of her work. Um, but abstract expressionism, well, and <laughs> <laughs> it it was required of artists to sort of um, be an abstract expressionist, otherwise they didn't get much notice in the in the reviews. And even people like um, Lloyd Rees, for a time, very short time, dabbled with abstract expressionism without any success at all. Um, um, John Coburn, I remember, tried, but that was... Uh, so it was quite a masculine era, wasn't it? Oh, very, yes. yeah, yes. And, and Margot, you would say, throughout that time, kept working on those sort of um, ideas of colour and More cerebral, and more cerebral, I think. I, I yeah. wouldn't have classed her as an abstract expression, but I, I can quite understand she'd have a go at it. Mm. I, I thought she was more cerebral, really, and more interested in cubism, more interested in structure, more interested in light, in colour. Architectural ideas. Textual, yeah, Ar strongly. Architectural ideas. Yeah, yeah. rather, yes. Rather, yeah.